Hey everybody, thanks for joining White Dog Outdoors. And thank you for all the support on the Urinimping series. I know you guys have really liked that. It's been really popular and you've provided a ton of feedback. I always ask you guys, what kind of things do you wanna see? Give me specific feedback if you think we're missing anything in that series. And today's video comes specifically from a comment from a subscriber saying, hey, what if I wanted to start urinimping but I didn't wanna spend all the money on the gear? How do I get started without spending a ton of money? And I thought, my God, that's a great idea. We need to talk about that because there's definitely ways that you can get into this without spending a ton of money. So I want to encourage that continued feedback. So we're going to do a giveaway of a white dog snapback hat. All you got to do to take part in the giveaway is be a subscriber on the channel, give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment down below letting me know what kind of things you want to see in this urine and series. If you haven't seen the series yet, go watch the series. I'll link it down below and then let me know what you think we should be adding to the series. I do have significant plans coming up for this year, but give me the feedback, I wanna hear it. And we're gonna randomly select a comment from that, this, this video, we'll announce it in a later video, and the winner will be able to select the color of the white dog snapback that they want. Right now we've got four colors. They're on our new website. I kind of launched a website, didn't really tell you guys. It's on the new website. Um, I'm not ready to sell the hats yet, but that's where we're going. That's what we're trying to do. So we got the new website ready for that. The hats are on there. I'll put a picture up here as well so you can see what they are, but the winner will get to be able to select the one that they want. So I definitely think that if you wanna learn your own anything, but you don't wanna spend a lot of money, you can absolutely do it. I think technique and understanding how to fish is way more important than having an incredible setup. You know, you could have a really good fisherman with a crappy setup who can go out and be really effective, a lot more effective than somebody who's got the best setup in the world but doesn't know what they're doing. So I would really, really recommend, go check out the Urine Infing series. I'm gonna link it down below, start there. And at the end of the video, it's gonna be right here, right? So go check out that series, watch the beginning volumes. There's five volumes for the beginners and then it gets into some advanced stuff. Learn how to urine it first, and if you learn those things, you can still be effective without having really expensive gear. Once you start urinating and you see how effective it is and how much fun it is, then maybe you can consider starting to upgrade your gear. But start with that technique, then start upgrading your gear. The gear will help you be more effective. It'll help you reach further. It'll help you be more sensitive and feel things. But you don't necessarily need it to start. So start with the technique, then we can start out, then we can work on building our gear. All right, I'm gonna assume that you already have a few basics, right? I'm gonna assume that you have waders. I'm gonna assume that you have a net. You have forceps to unhook a fish that ideally you have a thermometer so you can check the stream temperatures and you're only gonna fish those fish when it's 67 degrees or below for the water temperature. Um, but I'm gonna assume that you have some of those basics. We're not really gonna get into detail there. And just so we have a structure of what we're doing as we're going through this, we're gonna start at what's in our hand, we're gonna go out the rod and then down to the flies. So we're gonna start with the rod. Okay, so if you have a limited budget and you need to figure out within my budget, where am I gonna spend the money? If there's one place that you can spend money, I would spend it on the rod. I think getting a Euro specific rod is probably gonna be the best move you can make. You don't have to, but I think it's gonna put you in a different position and make you feel things a lot better. So your anything specific rods are longer. They're typically 10 to 11 feet. They have a stiff butt section that allows you to be able to fight those fish and it has the power to be able to fight the fish. It also has a nice long tip section, which is fairly flexible. So um, the top third or half of that rod is really what's bending. You got a nice soft tip, it's gonna protect tippet, it's gonna be able to let, allow you to use lighter tippet and be able to fight bigger fish. The backbone is gonna give you the power to fight bigger fish. And so that combination just really, really helps you be effective. They're also um, typically made of graphite, they're typically very sensitive, and so you can really feel the, 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 the bottom as you're, as you're kind of going along, you can feel the hits, and so, um, I think if you're going to think specific rod, if you have money, that's exactly where I would spend your money. So you're going to think rods typically range from a little under $200 to up to $1,000. Now those $1,000 rods, 
they're gonna be incredible, right? They're gonna be super light, they're gonna be super sensitive, you're gonna fish with it all day, and you're just gonna think it's the most incredible thing in the world. But there's a lot of good rods for a lot less money, right? So you can get a good rod for a little under $200 up to $250, um, and they're gonna be, they're gonna still be really good rods. They're gonna be better than not using a urinifying specific rod. So you can still get a Euro specific rod for not too much money. All right, so I did a little research on the lower end of rods just to see what was out there, what the price points were, you know, did they have good reviews? And I definitely think that there are some lower end rods that are good, made by good manufacturers, have good reviews and are not that expensive. So. Number one, I am not supported by any of these rod companies, so I'm not saying that you should use them based on any kind of affiliation. This is, you know, they're major companies, they have good reviews, basically, and they have good price points, okay? Um, the second thing I'll say about them is that I have not specifically used these specific rods. I have used rods from those manufacturers, but not these specific rods. Okay, so the first rod that I would suggest that you check out is the LL Bean Streamlight. This is the cheapest rod that I was able to find that's made by a good manufacturer um, and then had really good reviews. So it's the LL Bean Streamlight. It runs about $180. Uh, they have a few different versions of it. Um, I think there's a 10 and a half foot. There's a three weight, a four weight. So there's a few different options. They all seem to run around that $180. I would definitely recommend that you check them out. I've got experience with Bean's rods, had pretty good experience with them overall. They are a good, reputable company, and they basically take care of their customers, so I would definitely check that one out. The next one that I would suggest is the Echo Carbon XL. Um, I know some people who've had this rod. Um, they've generally liked it. It's a good manufacturer. Again, it gets good reviews. It is limited to 10 feet long, so there's a little bit of a limitation there for me, um, but it still runs a really good price point. It's around $200. The next rod is uh, a company everybody's heard of. It's the Orvis and it's the Orvis Clearwater. Again, this one's limited to 10 feet, so I feel like it's slightly limiting. Um, and this rod runs about $250, but obviously Orvis is a great company. They take care of their customers. They have an incredible reputation. And I know a lot of people who've loved their Orvis rods, me included. Um, again, I haven't used this specific one, but it does get good reviews. It does get good feedback, so check that one out. The last one, I kind of hesitate to, to bring up. It's a Cabela's rod. I found a Cabela's Euro, uh, a Czech nymphing rod. Um, you know, there's some options there too. That one runs about $200. I don't know. I know a lot of people who've had Cabela's rods and they're fine. Um, it's just another option to check out. So those are a couple of basics. Those are the ones I found that were the lowest price. And here's where I'll ask for you guys to help me out. Anybody who's watching this video, if you know of a good rod maker or a good urinymphing rod that you've really liked that's at a lower price point, leave that down below. Let, create a conversation for the people who are looking for these rods and we'll kind of try to keep that going. The other thing I would say is you're looking for rods. There's a ton of rod manufacturers out there. Go to like Facebook groups. There's a lot of urinymphing groups. I, I belong to a couple. There's USA Urinymphing and Urinymphing um, on Facebook and you can ask questions. People will give you all sorts of feedback on there. Um, you can learn a lot in those areas, so I definitely would suggest check things out there, okay? If you don't have the money to be able to go out and buy your anything specific rod, you know, maybe you can find one secondhand. I would search some Facebook, Facebook groups, ask some people, look online, eBay, Craigslist, places like that, see what you can find. I would definitely double check, read reviews on them, ask people in those Facebook groups if, if they have good experiences with them, and they'll be able to tell you some, some basics about them. So if you're not gonna buy a urinifying specific rod, you wanna use something that you already have, you absolutely can do that, okay? I'll give you a couple of guidelines for what I would say choosing a rod that you may already have to be able to use for urinifying, okay? The first thing I would say is you wanna choose a, lot, a rod that has a little bit longer length. So, you know, if you're fishing an eight foot rod, an eight and a half foot rod, you're gonna be stuck fishing really close to you. So. The more length you get on that rod, the better. I would say that's the number one thing when choosing an existing rod is I would go with length, okay? Um, you know, nine foot, you'd be okay with probably. Nine and a half would be much better. 10 feet would be great. Um, so I would say the number one thing, choose for rod length. The second thing I would say is the sensitivity of the rod. I want a rod that's really sensitive because I'm gonna be tight lining 
I'm gonna have a tight line from the tip of my rod down to those flies. I wanna be able to feel any kind of bump. Maybe I hit a rock, maybe I got a fish. I wanna be able to feel that, and that's really important. So I would say typically a graphite rod is gonna be a little more sensitive. Um, so I would use a graphite rod over say a glass rod. Graphite's gonna be a lot more sensitive. Glass is gonna be heavier. It's gonna be a lot softer. You're not gonna have that sensitivity as you would with a graphite rod. All right, so when it comes to reels, you do not have to go out and buy a reel for your nymphing. You can use a reel that you already have. I think there's two things that are important when it comes to reels. And number one is by far the most important, and that is that you wanna have a good drag. When you're urine and you are going to find some pretty decent sized fish because they live on the bottom most of the time and that's where you're fishing with urine and is on the bottom. You'll find you connect with a lot of fish but you connect with bigger fish. And so I think it's really important to have a reel that's gonna have a smooth drag. When you hook that big fish, you don't want the drag screwing up on you and losing that fish for you. So as long as you can use any reel that you have out there, I think as long as it has a smooth drag. So that's number one. Number two, is about rod balance. The, the reel will help balance out your rod. You can see how well this rod balances. It's perfect balance between the tip of the rod and the heel of the rod. It's gonna mean I have a little less wear and tear on me as I fish throughout the day. A more expensive rod is gonna balance more easily because it's gonna be lighter. Okay, so this is a, an expensive rod. Um, but I have other rods that are not expensive. They're just a little more tip heavy. So they're gonna balance like this. They're gonna get a little bit tipped down. So what you can do is you can upsize the reel. If you have a bigger reel, potentially you use that. So I have got flies hatching all over me on this river. Um, you can use a bigger reel that'll help balance things out. Um, and so that's probably the second thing is, number one, make sure it has a good drag. Number two, try to balance out that rod if you can. It's just gonna mean less wear and tear. So again, you don't need to go out and buy a reel you can use something that you already have. And I don't care if there's a dry fly line on there, if there's a streamer line on there, even if it has a sink tip, I don't care. You can still use that with the fly line on it. And we're gonna get into that. All right, and one of the reasons I said you don't need to have a specific reel, you can already use something that you already have. I don't even care what line is on here. You can have, uh, a floating line for dry fly fishing. You can have a streamer line. You can even have a sink tip. I don't even care. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, forget about the fly line. We're gonna go straight to a mono rig, okay? With urine nymphing, you'll see there's a lot of things out there about urine nymphing fly lines. And I do have a urine nymphing fly line on here right now. You don't need it. A urine nymphing fly line is basically just a really thin fly line that doesn't have a lot of weight, doesn't cause what they call sag. You can achieve the same thing with a straight piece of monofilament line that's called a mono rig. So I would say scrap the fly line, tie a mono rig straight to the fly line that you already have on your reel, and you're just gonna make that monofilament piece pretty long, probably 30 to 40 feet. That way you don't have to worry about that fly line ever coming out and into your, into your rod and out your rod tip. All right, I would probably recommend using a material called uh, Maximum Chameleon. Um, it's a little bit stiffer. It's gonna help deliver your flies and um, one thing I'll say here is if you haven't seen my video on leaders in the urine nymphing series, go check that out, all right? That's volume two. You're gonna wanna watch the leader section before you figure out what you wanna buy, okay? There are leaders and there are micro leaders. I go through all my formulas in that video. It's really important to understand how you want it to work and what's gonna be best for you before you go and buy in that, that, buying that mono. Um, when you decide what, what weight mono you want to use, go out and get that Maxima Chameleon. I think for 10, 11 bucks, you can get a spool of Maxima Chameleon and it'll cover your mono rig all the way out to, um, to the next section for about 10 bucks. Okay, so don't need to spend a lot of money. $10 on a mono rig, forget the fly line. All right, and you know I love my cider material. I think that's really, really important. So I would say there's a couple of options out there for the cider material. Again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch my volume two that goes through the liters and microliters. You need to understand that first, but I love my cider material. Uh, I typically use two colors. If you don't want to spend $10 on a spool and $10 on a spool, like so I do uh, fluorescent yellow and, and red, 
Um, so it's $10 for each spool, so $20 for my cider material. You could get away with one if you wanted to, or you could go with like a bicolor, like Cortland has a bicolor. There's a, a bunch of different lines out there. I think Rio has one. You can use those, or you can actually use, they've got this Scafars um, a wax. It's like a neon wax that you put on your line. You could potentially even use that. So I would say you can achieve your cider material for somewhere around $10. If you do want that urine and thing line experience, you don't have to buy the full urine and thing line. They have what they call shorties. Like Rio has a Rio urine and shorty. I think it's 30 bucks instead of the full 60 bucks for the full fly line. It's basically a 20 foot section that you just put on whatever fly line you already have on here. You just loop to loop it and it gives you 20 feet of your actual urine and thing fly line. So if you want that fly, um, the fly line experience, the urine thing fly line experience, you can still get it for about 30 bucks. All right, so the next section is really the tippet section. And you can tie your tippet directly to your high visibility cider if you want to. Um, I think it's probably worth the $10 to get a package of tippet rings. So a tippet ring is basically gonna tie to the end of your high visibility cider. It's basically just a little tiny minuscule metal ring that um, you tie to the end of your cider material and then your tippet ties directly to that. What that does is every, every time you retie your tippet, and your tippet is the section that you're going to retie all the time. It's the section that's underwater. It's the section that's going to break off. You know, that's the section you're going to retie all the time. When you retie that, if you have a tippet ring, you don't have to keep cutting back your high visibility cider every time to retie that. So without a tippet ring, you're going to cut back that cider material. You're going to lose, it's going to get too small. You're going to have to retie those sections. I personally think it's worth the $10 to get a package of tippet rings. All right, so the next section is the tippet. And if you're a fly fisherman already, maybe you already have this. Um, there's usually two different kinds of tippet. There's a monofilament tippet, which is typically used for things that are on the surface. So for like dry fly fishing, you're typically using a monofilament tippet. Um, for things that are under the water, you're typically using a fluorocarbon tippet. So I would recommend fluorocarbon tippet for urine and thing. Basically anything that's under the water, fluorocarbon, anything that's above the water can be monofilament. Um, there's reasons for that. I go into that in the, in the whole leader setup video as well. I'm not gonna get into it here, but check it out there. Um, you know, for probably $12 or so, 12 to $15, I can get a spool of, of tippet. Now you can do different sizes of tippet. Um, if you don't have a lot of money, you don't wanna spend 30 bucks on you know, different kinds of tippets, I would just get 5X tippet. Um, 5X fluorocarbon tippet, I think for 12 or so dollars, probably 10 to $12, you can probably get a spool of tippet that's gonna last you a little while. Um, I, would, I also carry 4X and I also carry 6X. Um, but if you're just starting out, you don't wanna spend the money, I would just go 5X, it's, it's a really good weight, all around weight. And um, honestly, I go through way more 5X than I do any other weight of tippet. So one spool of tippet, probably 10 to $12, that'll last you, it'll last you several trips at least. And one other thing I wanna mention, I build my own leader materials, right? So when you're doing that monorig down to the high visibility cider, I'm building that myself. If you don't wanna do that, you, you can buy pre-made leaders. Um, I think they're around 10 to $12. Um, there's probably a Cortland makes some, I think. I know Rio definitely makes some. Um, you can get them in different weights. They do have the high visibility cider built into them. Um, the thing with that is you're probably going to end up replacing those more often. So at 10 to 12 bucks a liter, um, I actually think you're probably better off just buying a spool of 5X tippet, building your own liter, get, getting, your, um, getting your main line, which is your Maxima Chameleon for about 10 bucks, get your cider material for about 10 bucks. So for 20 bucks, you basically have your liter. If you were to buy, you know, two of the urine thing liters and go through those, then you're actually probably gonna spend more money, but they do exist, they are out there, you can get them if you want. All right, now we get to the flies. So the, 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 the thing that's actually gonna be in the water that's gonna be getting you the bites. Um, this is a tough one, honestly. Um, I tie my own flies so I can get them specifically the way that I want. For urine and thing, you want really heavy flies, typically want heavy flies. And so you can go out and you can buy them online. I think you're gonna find that your average nymph is probably gonna be around $2, maybe two and a half, three dollars $3, depending on the size of the nymph that you're getting. Um, 
your flies are going to be heavy. They're going to be on or near the bottom. They're going to get hung on the bottom. You are going to lose a bunch of them. Okay, so don't go out and buy like five flies and think that's going to last you a trip because it's probably not, especially if you're using a double nymph rig like I do most of the time. You're going to go through a lot of flies. Um, I would recommend probably starting with a box of maybe around at least 20 flies. They should have uh, beads that are tungsten beads and I would recommend probably a different variety of these flies so I would say on average probably expect to spend 40 45 50 dollars on outfitting yourself with some flies that you're gonna be able to use out on the river now if you want to buy them in bulk you can buy them in bulk it's a little hard to do in your normal places online your major manufacturers, you know, your places that sell flies, they're gonna sell them one by one. If you look on Facebook in those urinimphing groups like uh, urinimphing and then USA urinimphing, there's a lot of fly tires out there that actually tie specifically for urinimphing and they will create a box full of urinimphs, like maybe like 100 nymphs or something like that, and they'll sell them and you'll get a better price overall. It's going to be a little bit of money up front, but overall it probably works out better. If you don't tie your own flies and you want to do a lot of urine thing, that's probably a good option. I don't have anybody that I specifically recommend, but there are people out there and I've found them through like Facebook groups, urine thing and USA urine thing on Facebook. And I think it's important to have a variety of flies in your box. So I don't want all the same size, all the same type of fly. Every river is different. Every river has different flies in it. We're gonna be going through a lot of that. I am gonna be launching a fly selection video in the urine infing series and the advanced series. That'll be coming out this year, probably in the next couple of months or so. Um, and if it's already out, I'll link it down below uh, for anybody who's watching this a little bit later. But for now, I have a lot of fly tying videos of my favorite flies that I use for urine infing. And that'll give you a good idea of what kinds of flies to look for. I think things like stone flies, squirmy worms, and then a lot of smaller flies like maybe uh, caddis nymphs, um, pheasant tails, waltz worms, um, uh, hare's ears, um, then getting down to maybe some things like pertigones and, and sm some smaller profile flies. Having a variety of flies is going to help you be able to cover the different kinds of water and, and the different bugs that live in the water, help you experiment and figure out what's right for those particular streams. So I'll link all my uh, fly tying videos down below. I'll pop some up on the screen here. You can see which ones I would recommend. Uh, definitely check those out but you can find a lot of these or similar ones online either from major manufacturers or people who sell flies and again i would recommend if you want to buy them more in bulk check out some of those facebook groups that have those individual fly tires you can communicate with them and get a box that's that's made like what what you might want all right well hopefully this video was helpful and you see that you can get out there and learn to urine them without having to spend a ton of money to do it and that's the goal uh, thank you to our subscriber for suggesting that again please Let's use the comments down below and anybody who's experienced out there, give people ideas of rods that you like that are not expensive or other areas where you think that they could potentially save money and be effective while you're in thing, right? That's what this is all about. Let's help people figure out how they can do it. So we have a lot more coming in the urine nymphing series with a lot of the advanced topics, things like fly selection. We've already got a little bit about reading water, but we're gonna be doing more of that throughout the year, picking certain sections of water, dissecting them and trying to catch fish in the areas where we think they're gonna be. I'm gonna go through how I tie my leader. I'm actually gonna retie my leaders for the year and I'm gonna show you guys how I do that. And then I got a really good idea from somebody, another great idea from somebody, um, a subscriber on the channel who left a comment and we're gonna do a video on when not to urinymph, right? Not every situation is perfect for urinymphing. When should I not urinymph? I think that's a great idea. So we have a lot more coming. And if you're watching this because you wanna learn how to get into urinymphing, that you, the first five volumes of the urine nymphing series are going to be so crucial. I would really highly recommend that you start learning the technique and the understanding of how you should be urine nymphing and there's so much that goes into it. I go into a ton of detail. So the first five volumes, I would really, really highly recommend. I'm linking that playlist to the urine nymphing series right here. So click on that. That'll take you through everything you need to know for the urine nymphing series. All right, and don't forget, we're gonna be doing the giveaway for the White Dog Snapback. In order to take part in that giveaway, leave a comment down below letting me know what kinds of things you wanna see. Give us a thumbs up on this video and be a subscriber on this channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, that is right here.